all aboard for excitement with everyone's number one train, Thomas the Tank Engine. I'm Thomas. I run this branch line. This delightful collection of award-winning videos takes you on a magical journey around the island of Sodor. It's an enchanting world where life is never boring and fun lies around every bend. Now you can be part of the adventure with Thomas and all his railway friends. There's cheerful Percy, James in his splendid red coat, the proud and strong Gordon, and the ever-faithful Toby. And don't forget the superintendent of the railroad, Sir Topham Hatt, who makes sure everything keeps right on schedule. Each video contains a variety of fun-filled stories that teach the values of friendship, working together, and the importance of trust and honesty. Every journey is one you will want to watch again and again. Bring the fun out of the roundhouse and into your house. Add all of these titles to your Thomas collection today. Thomas and Percy enjoy working in the docks. They like the sea air and the sound of the gulls. But one day, the friends were feeling hot and bothered. A crane was causing trouble. His name is Cranky, and this was his first day at the docks. You're useless little bugs, he called from above. If you put these freight cars on the inside lines, then I wouldn't have so far to travel. Rubbish, said Thomas. No crane has ever complained before. Well, I'm complaining now. And Cranky banged his load down on the quayside. Later, the two engines met Gordon and James and told them about Cranky. Cranes are airy fairy things. They need a lot of attention, like me, in fact, said Gordon. You should see the situation from Cranky's point of view, said James. He's high up in the air, coping with wind, rain, and baking sun. Then he looks down and sees you two little engines being annoying. No wonder he calls you bugs. When Cranky heard that the big engines agreed with him, he grew bossier still. Come on, come on, push those freight cars closer to me. But Percy was too upset to concentrate and push the freight cars too far. Poor Percy. Then Cranky played a trick on Thomas. Push your freight cars onto the outside line. It's easier for me to load up. So Thomas did. But Cranky left the loads beside the freight cars, not in them. You must have known my arm can't reach you there, complained Cranky. This mix-up caused confusion and delay. Sir Topham Hatt was most upset. Thomas and Percy, this new crane has an important job to do. I have heard that you have not been helping him today. You will go to your sheds and consider how you will improve yourselves tomorrow. Now Thomas and Percy were upset too. That evening, a big storm raged across the island. Cranky and the engines were trapped at the docks. We're sure to be safe in this shed, said Duck. But he was wrong. The engines had no idea they were about to be put in great danger by an old tramp steamer. It was out of control and running aground straight into the sheds. the engines from inside the shed. I can't! 
called Cranky. When the storm was over, Sir Topham Hatt rushed to the scene of destruction. Thomas and Percy will help you, he called to Cranky. And then you can help the engines. Oh, please hurry, cried Cranky, and tell them I'm sorry I was rude to them. So it was you, murmured Sir Topham Hatt. I owe those engines an apology. Thomas and Percy soon came to the rescue. And it wasn't too long before Cranky was upright again and clearing the wreckage. At last, all the engines were free. Oh, thank you, said Gordon. What would I have done without you? Well, I had to be rescued before I could help you. But I never thought it would be by a couple of b b Cranky was about to say bugs, but he quickly corrected himself. Uh, small engines, thank you. I'll never be rude again. However, you two mites are in my way, so move over. Pa, said Percy. He's back to bugging us. Don't move! You're still attached to Cranky! But it was too late. Cranky still looks down on the two little engines. But ever since that stormy night, he never calls them bugs or mites because he knows they might bite back. One summer's day, Thomas and Percy were idling in the station when Bertie the bus arrived. Have you noticed something, said Bertie? What sort of something? Sir Topham Hatt. He, well, seems different, replied Bertie. I did see him staring at the clouds this morning, said Percy. I wonder why. The reason was simple. It was Lady Hatt's birthday, and Sir Topham had a new outfit. It's perfect for my birthday party, said his wife. You look splendid, Topham, dear. And I'll wear my finest hat just for you, he replied. Your birthday is a great occasion. It is, so don't be late. Don't worry, my dear. I shall be spick and span and right on time. Later that day, Sir Topham had it changed into his new suit. You look fine, sir, said the station master. You'd best be going. Indeed, agreed Sir Topham Hatt. The engines are busy. I'll take the car. Is it reliable, asked the station master. Certainly, said Sir Topham Hatt. But it wasn't. As he sped along, he suddenly saw a large hole in the road. He braked hard, but it was too late. Bother! Now I've got a puncture. If I change my wheel, I am sure to dirty my suit, and that would never do. Just then, he heard Caroline. I have to attend my wife's birthday party, and I cannot be late. Please give me a lift. I'll try, sir. But Caroline didn't like going fast. I'm hot. My engine will overheat. And it did. Told you so, said Caroline sadly. Bother, bother. Then he heard a loud whistle. It was George the steamroller. George was cross when he saw Caroline. Call yourself a car? You're a disgrace to the road. Find yourself a scrapyard. Caroline spluttered in fury. George's driver was more polite. Can I be of assistance, sir? Only if you can get me to my wife's birthday party, sighed Sir Topham Hatt. We can take you to Thomas, replied the driver. He's just down the line. Much obliged. And they rumbled away. What about me? Wailed Caroline. I'll send for help, called Sir Topham Hatt. Stay there. That's all I can do. George was enjoying rolling along the lane, but not Sir Topham Hatt. Oil splashed everywhere. Worse was to follow. Help! cried George. Something snapped. He veered out of control, and Sir Topham Hatt landed in a muddy ditch close to where Thomas was taking on water. Bother! Bother! 
Thomas had never seen Sir Topham Hatt in such a mess. Can I help you, sir? asked Thomas's driver. Yes, please. Get me to the station as fast as you can. I'm afraid our fireman's taken ill. Then I'll be your fireman, sighed Sir Topham Hatt. Thomas was excited. Sir Topham Hatt had to work hard. Coal dust and smut flew everywhere. At last, they reached the station. Sir Topham Hatt looked at the clock. Just in time, he gasped. He hurriedly picked up a huge bunch of flowers. Good luck, called Thomas. Sir Topham Hatt's wife was waiting for him. As the clock struck three, there stood Sir Topham Hatt. Tired, but triumphant. He gave his wife the flowers. Well, thank you, my dear. I knew this was my special birthday party, but I didn't know it was fancy dress. Everyone laughed. And then the party began. Bill and Ben, the tank engine twins, work in the clay mines and quarries near Brendam Docks. Their work is important, but it can be hot and dirty. Sometimes this makes the twins naughty. One morning they were feeling very naughty indeed. That's my line of cars, huffed Bill. It's not. It's mine, snorted Ben. Yours is over there. It's mine. It's not. It's mine. It's not. Their friend Boko was worried. Stop quarreling, you two, or the only thing you'll have left to share is... Trouble. Silly, snapped Bill. Silly yourself, grumbled Ben. Bill and Ben, behave yourselves, said Sir Topham Hatt. It's clear to me that we need another diesel to help out. There is only one available. He's new and keen to make an impression. If I were you, whispered Boko, I'd get back to work right away. Meanwhile, Sir Topham Hatt was having doubts about his own decision. I hope the new diesel doesn't cause even more confusion. He's bound to have teething troubles. And he was right. Oh, my grease and oil. I wasn't expecting this hill. Oh, what's that? Boko came to the rescue. Sorry, said the diesel. I'm all hot and bothered. I've got teething troubles, you know. The news soon spread. Apparently it's teething troubles, confided Thomas to Percy. Hey, you two. This new diesel's got a toothache. Good luck. Why does Percy want to wish us good luck? asked Bill. Because he knows we'll need it. A diesel with a toothache must be the worst diesel of all. Then their manager spoke to them. You will take your loads to the docks and rest there tonight. There's a lot of hard work to do tomorrow. It was dark when the twins reached the docks. They left the freight cars by the quay and scurried off to the shed. You do look glum sighed Duck. It's the new Diesel's fault, replied Bill. He's got a toothache. He hasn't got a toothache. He's got teething troubles. That means he's new, and this causes some problems. In his case, it's his cooling system. Next morning, the twins heard an unfamiliar whistle. Oh, no! It's the new Diesel! And it was. Hello. I'll soon sort this train out. You take the front and I'll push from behind. <laughs> what fun! 
All went well as they set off. Then they came to a hill. Come on, come on! Push harder, you silly diesel! shouted Ben. But the diesel couldn't push any harder. I'm overheating again. Oh, pa! snorted Bill. You know what? sighed the driver. Let's try and finish the journey anyway. It means we'll have to pull the diesel as well. Can you do it, twins? We'll try! And sure enough, they could. That night, Sir Topham Hatt came to see them. Well done, Bill and Ben. I've sent the new diesel back to the works. Can you manage alone? Oh, yes, sir. Boko, whispered Bill. I'm sorry we were rude to you. And, added Ben, the new diesel was really quite friendly. And you know what friends do, murmured Duck? Know what? They always say goodnight to each other. And so they did. But they still chatted about the diesel and his teething troubles all night long. Thomas, Percy, and James were looking at the early morning sky. Everyone's so much happier when springtime comes, said Thomas. Everyone except Sir Topham Hatt, grumbled James. He seems to be working us harder than ever. I'm tired of these coastal runs. He just wants everything to be ready for the holidays, replied Percy. Anyway, salty air makes me all cheerful in my smoke box. Pah, snorted James. It's the countryside that really gets me fired up. It's the only place to be and he puffed away to collect his freight cars from the docks. Thomas and Percy had to take some empty freight cars to the scrapyards. In a siding, they saw an old coach. She looked very sad. What are you doing here? They called me old slow coach and told me I wasn't useful anymore. Now only the mice ride in me. Well, you may be dusty, but you look in perfect shape. The yard manager appeared. Come along, I have freight cars for you to take away. Excuse me, said Percy's driver. Can you tell us about this coach? Old slow coach, she's been here for years. She'll be broken up when we find the time. The engines were dismayed. We'll try and help you, said Thomas. But he didn't know how. Meanwhile, James was enjoying himself. This is the life, he chortled but he was heading for trouble. One of the fuel cars was leaking. Then, suddenly, it caught fire. Oh, help, cried James. They reached a siding and his driver gave the alarm. It's fuel and it's dangerous. As Thomas and Percy approached the junction, they saw the smoke and a guard waving a red flag. Sparks from James's funnel have set the cars ablaze, he called. The fire is under control, but it's quite a mess. You said the countryside got you all fired up, James, said Percy, but I didn't think you meant it in this way. Ha, huh, snorted James. It was the stupid car's fault, not mine. It's safe to proceed now, called a fireman. Thomas and Percy now felt sorry for James. It wasn't long before they reached the station. Later, as they were having a long drink at the water towers, they suddenly heard a commotion. What's the matter, Thomas asked. It's another fire at the workman's hut, replied Thomas's driver. We better see what we can do. The 
fire engines had a big problem. We are completely out of water, cried a fireman. We can't use seawater because it clogs our works. We'll just have to let that building burn. Then Thomas had an idea. Why don't you use the water in our tanks? We've just refilled them. The firemen wasted no time. You're very clever engines, chuckled their drivers. Soon the fire was out, but the hut where the workmen lived was destroyed. The men can't sleep on the beach, said the foreman. What about old slow coach? She would be perfect for the workmen, said Percy. Comfy, too, added Thomas. What a good idea, Percy, said his driver. They phoned Sir Topham Hatt, who agreed. She'll be spick and span by the time you collect her. And she was, and very happy, too. I can't thank you enough. I feel splendid. The engines buffered up to her, and she set off happily for her new home. Everyone agreed there was nothing old or slow about Coach, and she will always be really useful indeed. the brake van was feeling sad. Everywhere he looked, he could see engines and coaches moving steadily forwards. They all looked confident and cheerful. One day, he decided to talk to Oliver, the great western engine. I'm always going backwards, Mr. Oliver. I have forward-thinking views. I could be a leader, if you know what I mean. You can't be a leader without a train to follow. You, you don't have a train, Gordon said. Toad felt sadder still. Oliver wanted to help. You're a very useful brake van, Toad. You help me brake, and you keep my freight cars in order when we go down hills. I know, Mr. Oliver, but it would be so exciting to go forwards for a change instead of always seeing things sliding away from me. The freight cars were crossed with Toad. Who's he to start complaining? He's lucky to be able to look after us. Let's teach him a lesson. Freight cars decided to carry out their plan when they reached Gordon's Hill. When they were nearly at the top, they played their tricks. Ready, steady, go! And they jerked at a coupling, which broke. We're making your wish come true, Toad! Follow the leader, yelled the freight cars. Toad was still in a state of shock, so he didn't know what to think couldn't ask the conductor, he had jumped clear. Faster, faster, as fast as you want, screamed the freight cars. <laughs> Suddenly, Toad found it fun. But the fun was soon over. A crossing lay ahead and the gates were closed. Toad couldn't stop. Worse still, Toad now realized he was on the wrong track. There ahead was Gordon. The signalman changed the points just in time. On, on, faster, cried the freight cars. Suddenly, he saw James pulling a long, slow train. Oh, my goodness! B help! Save me! A quick-thinking shunter did, just in time. What was that? exclaimed James. The signalman warned the station master at the next station. There's a runaway coming. We'll send him into the sidings. 
Help! Help! Called Toad again. Toad saw some buffers. Those will stop me! But the points to the buffers weren't set. No, no! I'm back on the main line! Meanwhile, Oliver was racing to the rescue. I must catch Toad. I must. Toad sped past Henry. More danger lay ahead. Men were working on a bridge, but they had been warned about the runaway Toad and his freight cars. They diverted him onto old sidings, straight into a muddy pool. <laughs> Stopped at last. Oliver arrived, and when he saw Toad, he could only smile. A pond is the only place for a Toad, I suppose. That night, Toad spoke to Oliver. I'm sorry, Mr. Oliver, if I caused you any embarrassment. That's all right, Toad. So what do you think of going forwards? It was fun, decided Toad. But from now on, I'll be happy to look forward to the future. Busy going backwards, so to speak. <laughs> Gordon was feeling grumpy. This was making James cross. Why are you complaining all the time? Because I'm a big blue engine and I know everything. I shall complain whenever I want. You're just a small red engine with ideas above your station. I can't see any, said Percy. Where are they? Any what? Ideas above the station. The sky's empty. Like your smoke box, Percy, laughed James. But Gordon was still grumpy. One day I'll show you just what a big engine can really do. So what can a big engine really do? Not speak to silly little green engines for a start, replied Gordon. Then he puffed away. Later that day, Sir Topham Hatt came to see him. Gordon, you'll be making one stop today with an empty express to test our new station. You can make up time afterwards. Why can't Henry do it? He likes idling in stations. You will do as you are told. So Gordon did. But he was still unhappy, and he grew sick too. I just can't get up to speed, he moaned. It's time for your visit to the works. Your pipes are clogged, said the fireman. At last, they approached the new station. Gordon was impressed, but his mood soon changed. In front of him was a blank wall and huge buffers. What a boring view. Important engines like me should have a panoramic view where I can see people and people can see me. And he wished angrily. Gordon was happy when it was time to leave. Now you can really enjoy your run as long as your pipes will let you, said his driver. Come on, come on, I can go faster than this, huffed Gordon. Sick me, never. But Gordon began to feel more and more feeble. And soon, he came to a complete stop. What happened? His driver and fireman inspected him. Something's broken inside you, Gordon, said his fireman. Now you really will have to go to the works. Gordon was still fuming when James arrived to collect his coaches. Well, 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 so much for knowing about everything. You got too puffed up in your boiler, so it serves you right. When Gordon returned from the works a few days later, he was still boasting. I am the finest engine on the island of Sodor. Probably the finest in the world. Come on, Gordon. We're going to the official opening of the new station. Then there was trouble. 
As Gordon approached the new station, neither the driver nor fireman could apply his brakes. Something had jammed. The driver reduced steam, but Gordon was still going too fast. Help me, please. Well, Gordon, said Sir Topham Hatt, I knew you wanted a panoramic view, but this is not the way to achieve it. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. When Gordon was repaired again, he took Sir Topham Hatt to the new station for its second official opening. This time, he arrived safely, and everyone clapped and cheered as he pulled in. Sir Topham Hatt spoke to him. Your panoramic view is here to stay. I trust you will always see through it from the safety of your own rails. Gordon heartily agreed.